Winning Cures Everything. Now for your hosts, Gary and Chris. Welcome in. It is the Monday, April 19th, Winning Cures Everything edition of the show. <laughs> I'm Gary. This is Winning Cures Everything. I am riding solo this evening slash morning slash whatever you would like to call it. A lot to discuss on today's show. Obviously, there was a lot going on over the weekend. Chris had his show from Thursday night, Friday morning. And now I am here to talk about some of the stuff that went on over the weekend. Before we do that. WinningCuresEverything.com is the website. Make sure that you go and check it out. It has everything that you could possibly need to know about us, everywhere to follow us, everywhere to subscribe, everywhere to get the show, every other show that we've ever been on, including all of our appearances with SBR, Sportsbook Review, etc. You can find them all over there. And for those that have not paid attention to it, every Tuesday and Thursday we have a different NCAA football simulation from the 2020 season. We're doing matchups that we did not get that... We think that you guys would be interested in seeing how the game might have played out. Uh, we're doing Ohio State and Florida this week. Uh, I cannot remember what else is going on. Oh, I, I, we did San Jose State and Coastal Carolina last week. You know, we had Georgia and Texas A&M, a bunch of different stuff. So go and check it out, Texas and uh, Texas A&M. That was a fun one. So lots to discuss over there. You can always go and check it out, winningcureseverything.com. It's also right there on the YouTube page. Make sure that you are subscribed where you need to be subscribed. All that good stuff, the podcast, etc. Go and check it out. We will have a we have a different podcast out every morning during the week. Every morning, five a.m. is when that thing drops Central Time. So make sure that you are subscribed to the podcast. You leave a nice five star review. All that good stuff. If you are not following SBR Picks on YouTube, that's all you have to search out. SBR Picks. That sports book review. Our college football show comes out Wednesday of every week. So make sure that you go and subscribe there. You can also find us over at sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. All right, we've got a lot to talk about. Let's dive into the first topic. We have not discussed this much on our show on Winning Cures Everything, but we do discuss it on the college football show, and we will again this week. But the FCS playoffs are ready to kick off. There are some teams that have gripes, of course, but, uh, but let's talk about the top four seeds that would have been uh, South Dakota State and Sam Houston State is number two. Number three is James Madison. Number four is Jacksonville State. James Madison has been ranked number one in the polls basically all year. And I was a little bit surprised that they had them all the way down at number three. Uh, the way that the FCS playoffs are done is different from the NCAA tournament in basketball like anything else. They only rank the top four seeds. And then everything else is just kind of a free-for-all. Now, there's still a bracket. You can figure out what the rankings are if you if you really want to go through it. But they, I guess they do this for a reason. I don't really understand it. I, maybe they're trying not to hurt anybody's feelings or something. I, I don't understand it. But uh, the way that this thing sets up, you know, Jacksonville State gets a number four seed, and they they did their last four teams that were left out of the field and they announced them in alphabetical order. They did East Tennessee State, Murray State, Samford, and Southeastern Louisiana. How Richmond and Kennesaw State were not included in that, I have no idea. It makes no sense. Kennesaw State got absolutely drugged uh, by, by Monmouth last week, but Monmouth has been whipping up on everybody. I was shocked because Kennesaw State only has that one loss. They've been a top-10 team all year. Uh, they have routinely been in the playoffs and they were not even one of the the last four out so I I was a little bit shocked by it but the the matchups are interesting you know the game's going on on Saturday April 24th I'm kind of excited about it we have a really really big matchup uh, between two at-large teams and that would be Eastern Washington and North Dakota State neither of them won their league's auto bid and that one's at 2.30 p.m. Central Time. It, all of these are on ESPN3. We got eight playoff games on Saturday. It don't get any better than this. If you are looking to expand the FBS playoff, the college football playoff, if you want it to go to eight teams, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to be on campuses. 
And it would, I think it would make more sense to have it just all on one day, and it will be massive for the sport. Now, all of these are on ESPN3. I don't know what that means for ratings. I would imagine they'll be okay. Why they wouldn't just do this on ESPN, ESPN2, you know, ESPNU, whatever, I don't know. That doesn't make any sense to me. But, uh, but yeah, I think this is going to be a lot of fun. Obviously, FCS football, that is for the diehards of the sport, the people that really, really care. Uh, for those that... that Want me to give a prediction? I'll do it over on the SBR Pick Show. Uh, I don't. I don't have any idea right now. <laughs> this is, this year has been absolutely insane. Tons of underdogs have been winning. I've been going through and actually putting the numbers together for exactly how many underdogs have covered, how many underdogs have won outright, uh, how many double digit underdogs have won outright this season, and the numbers are astronomical in FCS. Uh, it's going to be nuts. It's absolutely going to be nuts. We have the sample size for all of these teams is so small. I have no idea, like who is going to be the best team, and and I think that's what's going to make it fun. We're going to see some interesting things go on with this, but I am pumped about the FCS playoffs. This is going to be awesome. I am looking forward to it. Make sure that you check out our Wednesday college football show over at SBR Picks on YouTube, and we're going to give out picks that day against the spread what we think the bracket's going to look like next week, all that good stuff. So go and check it out. Moving on to the next topic. The last time that Chris and I were live on Wednesday late afternoon, we were discussing Aaron Donald. And Aaron Donald had been accused uh, and charged, I guess, or there was a, a, a criminal complaint filed against him in Pittsburgh from somebody that was beaten up. We'll just say that. Uh, he was assaulted. And he put in a criminal complaint against Aaron Donald and claimed that he was one of the men that actually laid hands on him. The story came out that it was uh, a misunderstanding that turned into an incident that turned into uh, something much more that Aaron Donald went after this dude because he accidentally bumped into him at a nightclub at 3 a.m. in Pittsburgh. Turns out, not actually what happened. And we did talk about this on the show about, hey, do you think it's a possibility that maybe they got the wrong guy, that Aaron Donald was just a part of this group? And that's exactly what ended up happening. Aaron Donald was the one that was pulling guys off of the victim. And once they released the video footage, the surveillance footage from that club, the accuser came out and actually apologized to Aaron Donald. And this is what goes on when you stay out at places like that that late at night. I mean, it's just... It, and not to say that he not to say that he needs to stop doing that. Obviously, you want to hang out with your friends, you can do whatever you need to, but understand that sometimes there are consequences. Sometimes there are things that, that can kind of drag your name through the mud a little bit, and it's not great, but it is good that it came out that Aaron Donald was actually trying to help this guy. And, and I'm glad that the guy came out and said, yo, I had this story all wrong. Like, I apologize to you for doing that. It was it was really nice to see. And I'm glad that we are kind of clearing Aaron Donald's name because he did nothing wrong. So the only thing he did wrong was being out late uh, in the wrong spot, you know, in town. That's all it was. So sometimes this stuff can bite you. But in this situation, I don't think that uh, we are going to have a whole lot to worry about. So I'm glad that Aaron Donald is not going to have to miss time. All that kind of stuff. It's going to be good. Everything is going to be fine with that situation. Moving on from there. We have not talked about Arizona hiring a new basketball coach. But last week, late last week, whatever you want to call it, they officially hired, Arizona did, uh, Gonzaga assistant coach Tommy Lloyd. Now, diehards of this sport, people that really pay attention to it, and even some that don't pay super close attention to it, all know who Tommy Lloyd is. He has been the right-hand man of Mark Few for years and years. He is. It was written into his contract at Gonzaga that he was going to be the next guy after Mark Few retires. Well, Mark Few is only in his late 50s. I think he's going to be around for a little while. You know, at Tommy Lloyd, 46 years old, if, if Mark Few decides that he wants to keep going, you know, another six, seven years, do you want to wait until you're in your 50s? Uh, sorry, Mark Few is, is in his uh, early 60s. My apologies. But either way, uh, do you want to wait around another, let's say it's seven years, 
for Mark Few to decide that he gets tired and, and wants to go to the farm? I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't wait until I'm 53 to get a head coaching opportunity. I mean, that's that's great. Especially, like, you never know how things are going to go, right? Like, if Gonzaga decided, all of a sudden, it, say things get kind of not great up there under Mark Few, they're not making it to Sweet 16s anymore, they're not bringing in these recruits anymore, all that kind of stuff, things go south, you may not be able to have that opportunity. So, if you are offered a, a top 15 job in the sport, maybe top 10 job in the sport, like Arizona, even with the sanctions coming, all that kind of stuff, then you have to take it. I think he absolutely made the right decision taking this job. Now, on the other side, this is going to be tough. It's incredibly difficult because he is coming into a situation where basically all of the fan base wanted somebody that was in the family. Now, and this is not like Indiana and whatever else. Uh, uh, what was the other one? North Carolina, all that kind of stuff, where it's just kind of built in there. At Arizona, it, it's been a little weird, right? Because everybody loves Lute Olson, but it, Sean Miller had kind of gotten away from all of that. It's just a weird situation in Tucson right now. And you, you've got, you know, former players that are openly questioning whether or not this was the right hire. You don't have everybody on the same... Uh, on the same plane right now. And that's going to be tough to get through. However, I, we still don't know what's going on with the NCAA stuff. I, I don't think he's going to have to worry with it for like another year. I do think recruiting is still going to be difficult. But remember, Tommy Lloyd's big thing at Gonzaga was international players. He's still going to be able to go out and get those guys. The transfer market, you'll be able to kind of kind of build a team overnight with the way that the transfers are going, there's over 1,300 kids in the transfer portal right now. It's 30% of the kids that are playing basketball in the sport are in the portal. You can build a good team. And I think he can do that. I think he can have success there. Um, you know, you hesitate to call anything a home run because things that we've called a home run in the past maybe, maybe have not been, I guess. And then things that you would think would never work out have ended up being absolutely fantastic. So... You never really know how these things are going to look. Like Everybody thought that Archie Miller was going to be fantastic at Indiana, and he didn't turn out. It is what it is. But I do think that Tommy Lloyd is going to work at Arizona. I just it, It's going to be a tough situation at Arizona. Anybody watching the video sees my wife running through, <laughs> of course. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I, I, I do think that I'm a fan of this hire. I do think that Tommy Lloyd is going to be successful I just wonder how long they're going to give him and if they're going to be patient. That's what I'm that's what I'm curious about with Arizona. Moving on from there, let's talk about Pat McAfee for a minute. On Friday morning, he announced that he is the new analyst, co-host of WWE's SmackDown on Friday nights on Fox. And typically in in our world in the sports world, stuff like that doesn't uh really grab headlines or anything like that, but I like Pat McAfee. You know, Chris and I got to hang out with him a couple of years ago when we he was part of the Thursday Night Football crew, and we went downtown Memphis and hung out with um, uh, Adam Amin, and Pat was hanging out, and we sat and talked to him for a little bit, and just the way that he was building his show and everything was really intriguing to us, and I've, I've really been following him since before that, but especially then, because he had his radio show on the road with him at all times. Like, he had, he had a box truck, and he was going live every day doing a radio show, doing his Thursday night football, flying to wherever he was going over the weekend, flying out to New York. I mean, it, his, his life is nuts. And now, the way that it works, because their show is based out of Indianapolis. They are on Sirius XM Radio, and they do their YouTube show, and they find a way to go live at the same time every single day. Like, it is their job. That is what they are doing. They're rocking this thing no matter what. And I am a massive, massive fan because I think that he grinds. He absolutely puts in the work, the, the blood, sweat, and tears to get into it. So, of course, even though I have not watched a cable wrestling show in a very long time, I turned it on on Friday night. And I was incredibly impressed. And I, it shouldn't have been anything more than, than what I normally expect from him. 
But to be able to do all of the things that he does, it is, it's really amazing to be able to watch him do it. Uh, so if you have not, of course, watched SmackDown on Friday nights, 7 p.m. Central Time, make sure you tune in. It's on Fox, Big Fox, you know, TV antenna, Rabbit Ears Fox. Make sure that you check it out. Uh, I'm a big fan of Pat's and will continue to be so. Whatever he does, I will support, and it is well worth your time. I will tell you that. Of course, the Pat McAfee Show, you can check it out, of course. Um, but, yeah, that was that was very interesting. Very interesting to see, you know, all of the, the wrestling stuff, the storylines, that stuff is fairly entertaining in and of itself. But the way that Pat actually calls the action or, or color commentates the action, uh, definitely worth your time. So I would check that out if you have the ability to do so. We've got a couple more topics that we're going to hit this evening. Uh, first off, Jake Paul. Jake Paul KOs Ben Askren. It was part of the Triller Fight Club thing that they do. It's pay-per-views, and it's typically one of the Paul brothers. Triller also did Mike Tyson and uh, and whoever he fought. Roy Jones Jr. Uh, just a couple of months ago. The, the Jake Paul Ben Askren thing, of course, they build it up with hype, and ESPN and everybody else is giving them coverage. Everybody's talking about it because Jake Paul is an online celebrity, Ben Askren, former MMA guy, but he was never known for his striking, like all of this different stuff. And anybody that paid money for this, uh, just from the clips that I was able to see, I mean, people were clipping this and going back and forth on it, and I'm going to tell you, I did not stay up late enough to to see what happened until uh, the next morning. You know, I got up on Sunday morning and went back through, saw all the different stuff that was tagged on Twitter and everything, and this looked like an absolute uh, three-ring circus. This was a sideshow. It, it makes no sense to me why people would pay pay-per-view money for something like this that it, far be it from me to question the integrity of a sport. But this was a complete joke. What are we even doing Having these guys on any kind of streaming service, whatever, and I understand that in today's society, I mean, you, you got somebody like me that has their own podcast show, right? Like, I, I, am, I am a nobody. I have built my way up to be able to have at least somewhat of an audience, and we appreciate you guys for that. But this is, I mean, what, what are we trying to do here? Jake Paul wants to be a professional boxer. He has not boxed against a boxer yet. Ben Askren, like everybody says that, oh, we need to take Jake Paul seriously now because he he beat Ben Askren. Ben Askren's not a boxer. He was in MMA, and he had retired from MMA because he wasn't good anymore. He got rocked by Jorge Masvidal, and then it was done. There was nothing left. And this man got in that ring and stood there and moved around like a robot and took a couple of right hands and got knocked out within the first two minutes. And I don't even know that he was necessarily knocked out. Like, it it looked a little fishy to me. So, of course, everybody's excited. I say everybody. They're, the people that are shouting the loudest are excited about Jake Paul, and, oh, this is going to be great. He's 3-0 and now, and nobody can question him now. And, yeah, yeah I, I think we still can. I, I found it very telling that, as soon as he gets out of the ring and he's walking back to the dressing room, Ben Askren is smiling. His wife is hugging him and smiling. Nobody is upset about this loss. And Askren even came out afterwards and said, there's nothing to lose for me here. Like, I'm getting paid either way. You know, what, what does it matter? Like, he wanted to fight me, that's fine. Like, a loss does nothing. A win does nothing. This is a joke. Like, I, I'm, I'm with Askren on this. But it, the coverage that we give to this stuff, and I'm doing it myself right now, but it's, it's an incredibly popular topic. So, of course, I had to weigh in because I don't understand it. I don't understand why anybody wants to watch this guy fight. I mean, didn't this guy just have, like, the FBI raid his house? Like, what, what are we even doing? Like, <laughs> I don't understand. And, and they pay Askren $500,000 to go out there for two minutes of work. What? They that fight made that much money to be able to pay Jake Paul whatever millions of dollars he made off of this, and then Askren five hundred thousand. 
I did. I don't understand it. I, I do not. I don't get these Triller Fight Club things that are going on. Um, and I probably never will. I don't guess. I mean, there's. They're going to have more. I know. Uh, Evander Holyfield is doing like an exhibition against the last guy that beat Mike Tyson. Um, and it's it Teofima, uh, whatever the guy's name, the the champion, the boxing champion. They are doing a fight in Miami in June, I believe. And it, this is that same Triller Fight Club thing. And they, I mean, the commentary was ridiculous. Uh, Snoop Dogg and Justin Bieber being out there and all this. I mean, they're paying all these people. It's, I don't get it. I don't understand it. I probably never will. Um, and I hadn't paid for one of these yet. You know, I, I thought that I was going to pay for the Tyson thing, but nope, nope. Show did not. All right, we will close out with this. The U.S. Defense Department confirmed a leaked video of an unidentified aerial phenomena saying that it is, in fact, real. I don't know what to think about this. And I'm curious if you guys will weigh in and let me know your thoughts on it because we've talked multiple times on this show over the past year while all of the uh, the COVID-19 stuff, the pandemic is going on, and there was the election, and there was it just it, everybody has uh, it has ADD right now, right? It's a squirrel, and look up there. It's this and that, and it's whatever. It, nobody is talking about the fact that the United States government has confirmed multiple times that there are UFOs. Now, Chris and I have gone back and forth, like, do you believe in aliens and whatever? And I have given the same answer every time. And that is, I am not egotistical enough to believe that we are the only people, the only species out here, right? I Would it surprise me if there are aliens or ghosts or whatever else? Absolutely not. Because I don't think that we're it. So... Does it surprise me that we are seeing UFOs and all that? No. Does it surprise me that the U.S. government is actually admitting that it's real? That's a little surprising. And I kind of thought that more people would maybe freak out a little little bit about it. And yet, it doesn't become news. And I don't know what to make of that. So I am curious your thoughts. So uh, that's, that's your homework for me is, you know, jump in the comments on YouTube and... Let me know what you think, or, or hit us up on Twitter. Of course, you can follow me at GaryWCE or the show at Winning Cures. Um, but let me know what you think about this, because I am I'm curious. I'm very curious about it. I don't know what to make of it. I, I, I wrote it down as the end of the show, and, and I just have, I'm not passionate about it, anything like that. I just find it strange. That it's not like a top news story. It's not something that's getting a ton of traction. And I wonder why that is. Does everybody just assume that there are, in fact, aliens? And oh, well, of course. Of course, there's going to be aliens. Of course, there's, you know, all of this other stuff. Like, is nothing surprising anymore? Is it not surprising that the government is actually letting us in on this little secret that's been going on since, you know, the 50s, 60s? I, I find it odd. I find it very strange. Am I glad it's happening? Yeah, kind of. I do find it uh, entertaining, interesting. I do find it all of that. All right, we're going to get out of here. I do appreciate your time. Of course, this is the Sunday night slash Monday morning show. Make sure that you are subscribed and that you do leave a nice five-star review on Apple Podcasts or whatever your podcast app is. We're on Spotify. We're on iHeartRadio. We are on Amazon Music. I mean, wherever you can get a podcast, we are a part of it. And we do appreciate you guys for listening. If you would, share the show out. Tell your friends about it. If you like this episode, of course. If you didn't like this episode, just forget it happened. Don't tell anybody. We we would appreciate that. So, go to winningcureseverything.com. Go to sbrpicks.com slash NCAAF. And I think that's going to do it for tonight. We, of course, will have our Monday live show. Uh, we're going to talk some NFL win totals. We're going to talk about Brad Stevens a little bit. Uh, we're going to talk a little spring football, all this kind of stuff. You know, it, it, there's... There's many things that always happen on Monday mornings. I will tell you that. I will tell you that. All right, so check it out. SBRPicks.com slash NCAAF. WinningCuresEverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to be subscribed. Make sure and like the video, of course, and, uh, and jump in the comments. We would like to hear from you. You guys are incredible. 
Thank you so much for letting us be a part of your day. And uh, with that said, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and hopefully all of your tickets cash. Thanks for checking out Winning Cures Everything. If you want to keep up with us, hit subscribe on YouTube or your favorite podcast app. Visit the website at winningcureseverything.com or you can like us on Facebook or follow us at Winning Cures, at Gary WCE, or at Chris B. Giannini on Twitter. Share out the show, leave a nice review, and make sure to comment and tweet at us.